know if you can hear me well. Everything sounds good to you. Let me know. Uh, but it's good to be with you this morning. It was good to see some of you guys uh, in prayer last night. Uh, it's always, always good as well. Always, always good to see you guys um, on prayer. Don't forget, guys, we have prayer on uh, Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to 8.30. 8 p.m. to 8.30 prayer was just really, really good. Just really, really good. And um, you, are, you are missing some good time if you are, if you are missing prayer. Um... um on 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 in our evening times during the fast we have um because today today's the seventh so we've got 44 days um got 44 days left um how are you guys doing how's it how's it going just kind of put in the chat quick one word if you can describe it in one word one word how's the fast going let me know how's it going uh one to five words. I give you a little more. One to five words. And um, um, I know challenging, right? Challenging. Um, I think it's really important to reemphasize all the other things that are attached to the fast because if all we're doing is not eating, we're dieting, right? <laughs> we're dieting. Um, most times, I think people think a fast is really about what you give up only, but it's not about what you only give up. It's also about what you put in, what you put in. So a fast isn't simply about what you give up. It's not simply about that. It's, it's also about what you put in, what you put in. So you want to you want to you want to so when i say we have prayer at 8 30 at 8 p.m uh to 8 30 p.m on monday through friday um then that's something you add in uh, when i talk about the prayer moments just spending time with the lord on saturday for 30 minutes that's something you add in when i talk about um every hour just kind of five to ten minutes of just prayer every hour um that's something that you add in. That's something that you. That's something that you add in. You know, when I talk about uh, turning turning the uh, turning the radio off, whatever you listen to in the morning, uh, if if it's, if it's not something about the Lord, 
you know, um, take that time if you drive and if you drive and you normally have music on in, in your car um, or a talk show or a podcast, you know, fill it with things of God, fill it with things of God. Um, so, um, you know, so it's, it's not just simply about what you give up, but it's about what you put in as well, what you add in, right? So, um, looking forward to hear what God is, God is doing, uh, for you. Um, let's, let's, let's get rolling. Let's get rolling. Um, oh, before I do that, let me say thank you to those who have, uh, sold, um, for the outreach thank you thank you thank you I wanted to wanted to remind myself i've been wanting to say that for, for about a week i just kept forgetting so thank you thank you for that um we'll be heading over to we'll be heading over to on the 17th so um um gloria uh, the host should not have to let you in so if, if you if the host has to let you in then you are doing something wrong um, because the host doesn't have to let you in. Um, so let me put this up here really quickly so you can grab that. All right, so just that Zoom ID. Um, but the host does not have to let anybody in into the room for um, for prayer at night. So that's the Zoom ID and that's the passcode. And if anybody who knows the Zoom ID and Pasco can put it in the chat, that would be good too. So Gloria can see that. So Gloria can see that. Gloria, that's the Zoom ID and password. Um, um, uh, because there's a passcode, the host does not have to let you in. So um, I think you might have the wrong ID or the wrong, or the wrong passcode, one or the other. Um, so that's it there. Okay. Um, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, uh, to you we give thanks. To you we give honor. To you we give glory. Because you are God. You are God and you are our God and we belong to you we belong to you Lord we repent of sin and ask that you would cleanse us we ask that you would cleanse us and forgive us wash us God so that Lord Jesus we would be able to adequately uh, cultivate obtain attain maintain a relationship with you help us Jesus Lord we honor you we honor your presence we thank you Lord for calling us uh, for this moment in time as we desire to draw near and draw closer to you. Be with us today. Lord God, as we share here, our eyes, ears, and hearts are open. Lord, will be with us all day as we fast, Lord Jesus. It's a challenging day. It'll be till 6 p.m. And so, Lord God, ease the pain, the stomach pains, and the hunger pains, Lord God. Lord God, may we just be reminded of why we do what we do. Bless each of people, uh, those who watch the replay. Bless them on every platform. So you name me pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. When I think of 
the people of God. When I think about us, let me, let me just be very specific. I'm talking about the Fed, talking about the, since we're the ones fasting, let me be very specific to us. When I think about us, when I think, when I think about us, When I think about us, I think about poster, you know, and and you know, on the on the on the back of the on the back of remember they used to have those messages on the back of milk cartons with missing children. Remember the TV commercial, do you know where your children are? It's 10:30. You know who your children are. I remember seeing that growing up and in the milk cartons. And I could imagine the angst of the parents of those who were missing. I can't imagine what that feels like. But I tried and, and it's just, it's pretty devastating. It's got to be pretty devastating. And then when I think about Christians and the body and the church and what Christianity has become, I feel like that's what God is. God has a bunch of us as the body of Christ on the back of a milk cup, generally speaking. It's as if God is watching TV and 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 the TV commercial comes on saying it's 2022. Do you know where your children are? Do you know where your children are? And and we are responsible for answering that question when it comes to our walk and our faith with God. We are responsible for answering that question. Where are we? And too often we are off track. We are off track and we are disjointed and we are out of place. Um, and we are out of alignment. We were never supposed to be here and not be aligned with God, ever. That was never God's design for us. From Adam and Eve, that was never God's design for us. God's design was always that we would walk in freedom, walk in holiness, walk in power, walk in authority. But when we allow the enemy to take us from our purpose, take us out of alignment, then we become the missing children. We become, we become the missing children. And what we do is we actively give possession of our minds, our bodies, our souls, our spirits to the enemy. Why do I say that? No, I don't give myself. I live for Jesus. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm this and that. But being saved and being out of alignment with God is actively giving yourself to the enemy. Being saved and being out of alignment with God and not trying to be put back in alignment. Let me let me make a caveat to that statement. Being saved and not actively trying to be in alignment with God is actively giving yourself over to the enemy. Actively giving yourself over to the enemy. 
I'm not talking about whether that's your intention or not. Intentions are irrelevant. Intentions are irrelevant. But when we constantly live a life that says, Lord, I'll do for you here, but I'm not going to do for you here. I'm going to give this to you here, but I'm not going to give this to you here. When we cherry pick what part of our lives we want to give God, we are actively giving ourselves over to the enemy. We belong to Satan. Whether we know it or not. And there's some people who just actively give themselves over to the devil. But, and, and it's almost as if with, with God, it's easier for God to work with someone who has actively given themselves, who has, who has consciously given themselves over to the enemy because he knows what he's working with. He's not, he doesn't have an in-between. He doesn't, he doesn't have anyone vacillating between who I belong to today and who I belong to tomorrow, who I belong to uh, at noon, who I belong to at six. No compromise. When, and when our hearts are compromised, you, you may compromise in your actions at moments. We all have. But when your heart is compromised, you do not belong to God. Your heart for him, your, your heart, when I say your heart, I mean your desire to live for him. And so we've got to get in divine alignment with God. We've got to get into divine alignment. Why? Because we were always born to belong to him. We belong to God. We belong to God. Somebody type, I belong to God. I am not my own. I belong to God. I belong to God. Give some scripture. So as we journey on, as we journey on this, 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 these next 44 days, 44 days after today, 44 days after today, I want us to be reminded that when, when the time comes, the feeling, the feeling, when the feelings to give up happen, when the feelings to break the fast happen, uh, Apostle won't know, but God does. I don't, I don't, I don't need to know. God does. Right. Remember that you belong to God and the temporary satisfaction that you will get from breaking your commitment to God does not compare to the permanent the temporary satisfaction that you will get from breaking your commitment to God does not compare to the permanent alignment you will get if you don't break your commitment with God. The pain pain of not being able to eat or whatever that pain is that sacrifice consider consider the suffering of Jesus when that pain that hunger pain comes 
consider the suffering of Jesus. Can I suffer a little while? And I'm going to suffer a little while because I belong to Jesus. I belong to him. Tammy, Chris, y'all got one of my scriptures. I'm talking about one of my scriptures. Let's go to Genesis really quickly. Genesis chapter three. Let's go to but I can read all of all of it. We'll read verse six through nine. And it says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delightful to look at and the tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful, she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of the two of them were opened. That is their awareness increased. And they knew what and they knew that they were naked and they fastened fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Verse eight. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool afternoon breeze of the day. So the man and his wife hid and kept themselves hidden from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? The Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Here in this scripture, God is not looking for Adam, but he's, but he's looking for Adam's heart. He's looking for Adam's heart. He's not looking for Adam. He's looking for his child. He's looking, he's trying to find where is the son, where is the daughter, well, he's saying Adam. So where is the son that I put here to rule and to reign and to have dominion and to have authority? Because that's what we were born. Where is the son that was once in alignment with me? Temporary. Temporary. Satisfaction, Adam. Has caused a life long permanent. Unaligned people with God. Because of one decision. One decision to not be committed to what he was put here for. One decision changed the world forever. And so then you no longer, he no longer belongs to God. He no longer belongs to God. He is now actively separated himself from God and has given himself over to the enemy. I get another scripture. That's why this is important that we understand that we belong to God. As you go through the fast, those moments you feel to break it, insert your name. Insert your name and 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 
Seth, where are you? Anna, where are you? Cassandra, where are you? Melvin, where are you? Jeff, where are you? Anthony, where are you? Renee, where are you? Gloria, where are you? Jenny, where are you? Tamara, where are you? Chris, where are you? Where are you? Francis, where are you? Where are you? And so what we have to do, we have now got to find our way. We are going, we are, what we are doing is we are, we are finding our way back into the light. Divine alignment. Divine alignment. And I say divine alignment because we can be, we can, we can be aligned with God in certain areas. In certain areas, we can be aligned with God, but that's not divine alignment. That's that's um, selective alignment. And that's that's selective alignment, and selective alignment is not divine alignment. We belong to God. And we were created to be in divine alignment. And that's what we need to be. Um, let's go to quite a few scriptures here. Psalm 100. Psalm 100, I had, to get a, I had to get my iPad so I can look at the scriptures and read them at the same time. Of course, I'm reading in the um, Amplified Version at the moment. Uh, verse 3. Know and fully recognize with gratitude that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That's who we are. That's who you are. So be reminded of that as you go through the fast. I'm, I'm fasting because I belong to him and I want to belong to him in every area of my life. And I'm not tripping thinking this is an easy thing because I, one thing we know how to do is get in our own way. Nobody get, nobody does that better than us. We know how to get in our own way, especially when it comes to things that, that, that we want. We know how to get in our own way and not give God total control. Got another scripture for you. to it here first Corinthians chapter 3 verses 21 through 23 first Corinthians chapter 3 verses 21 through 23 and it says so let no one boast in men about their wisdom or of having this or that one as a leader for all things are yours whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, Peter or the world or life or death or things present or things to come all things are yours and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God you belong to Christ Christ belongs to God. 
Just want to encourage you this morning. Just want to encourage you this morning. And so, let's go to just a few more. Let me see if I'm going to do this one there too here. That. You can read when you get a chance, Romans 14, 1 through 12. I'm not going to read all that. I'm not going to read all of that. Um, um, I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read a, a, a piece of it. So when you get a chance, read Romans 14, 1 through 2. 1 through 12, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, let's go with verse uh, 5. Nah, not verse 5. Nah, yes, verse 5. Let's go verse 5 through. Let's go verse 5 through 7. 5 through 8, sorry. 5 through 8. One person regards one day as better or more important than another, while another regards every day the same as any other. Let everyone be fully convinced, assured, satisfied in his own mind. Verse 6, he who observes the day observes it for the Lord. He who eats, eats for the Lord. Eats for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. While he who abstains, abstains for the Lord and gives thanks to God. Verse 7, here's our, here's our, here's our key. Verse 7 and 8. None of us lives for himself for his own benefit, but for the Lord. And none of us dies for himself, but for the Lord. See, and that's a key. New message for another day. Are you willing to live for the Lord? Are you willing to live for the Lord? And when we band together, we, we feel real good. And absolutely, we're willing to live for the Lord. But the greater question is, are you willing to die for the Lord? What are you willing to sacrifice for the Lord? You gotta do both. You gotta have both. Both will put you in divine alignment. And for the record, I don't know how long now I've been saying it, but I said there's gonna come a time where you're gonna have to publicly make a proclamation about what you believe. You better believe it. I am not a prophet. I speak what the Lord says to me. That ain't my office. But there's going to come a time. There's going to come a time where you're going to have to publicly proclaim that thing. Regardless of the consequences. But verse 8. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. We are the Lord's. We are the Lord's. It's us. We are the Lord's. Just a few more scriptures. I'll let you go. Got to get to work. First Corinthians six nineteen and twenty. Do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is within you? And you have received as a gift from God and that you are not your own property. You were bought with a price. You were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. So then honor and glorify God with your body. It's encouraging. 
And God's watching. He's not watching to see if you mess up. What he is watching, he is watching in delight. Every time you, you keep to your commitment to him, he is watching, smiling with great joy. First Corinthians, that was first Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. When you guys get a chance, um, um, I give you these to um, uh, Romans eight twelve through twelve through seventeen. Read that on your own. You get a chance. Um, Romans eight twelve through twelve through seventeen. My blessed grandmother used to say, Galatians. <laughs> Galatians. Galatians 13 through 25. She would say, Seth, turn to Galatians. Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Verses 13 through 25. I want you to be encouraged today because um, you got this and you got this not because you're that good, but because you belong to God. And I want you to carry that with you. You belong to God. So it's Galatians chapter five, Galatians chapter five, verses 13 through 25, right? The last two scriptures are Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 to 25, and then Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. But I want you to be encouraged today. Amen. Amen and amen. Father, thank you for these, your people. Lord Jesus, who um, we, are, we desire to be divinely aligned with you. We, we desire, Lord Jesus, to be so closely connected and in fellowship that our hearts are intertwined with your heart, Lord God. So as we go throughout these next 44 days, Lord God, well, 45 days, including today, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would strengthen them. Lord God, strengthen them, Lord God, as they uh, continue to fast and as they continue to Seek divine alignment from you, Lord Jesus. Bless them. I um, pray that you would cover them and shield them from any schemes of the enemy that uh, will arise, uh, any temptations that will arise, Lord God, anything that's going to come against their desire and their efforts, Lord Jesus, to be divinely aligned with you. Lord God, remove what you need to remove, the things, the people, the thoughts, the ideas, the plots, the schemes. Lord God, from anywhere and everywhere, remove them, block them. And Lord God, the ones that you allow, Lord Jesus, we really do understand that because you are allowing them, that means you trust us to win. You trust us to win. You trust us to win. And so we thank you, God, for trusting us to win. Thank you, Lord. And so, Lord Jesus, be with them all day. Bless them. Bless those that concern them. Lord God, in your name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Be encouraged today, y'all. Be encouraged today. Um, um, and go with God. Be encouraged and go with God today. Be encouraged and go with God today. See you tonight, 8 p.m. for prayer. Um, um, you guys uh, have that link and that passcode and stuff. So be encouraged. Okay. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. All right. Love you guys. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Right. Remember, you 
belong to God.